Good morning, everybody. It's Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. Happy Friday, everybody. I was like, oh, this is going to be great today because it's cloudy. And Mr. Sun decided to come out. So I'm hoping, and I hate to sound, you know, I don't want to, you know, wish the sun away, but maybe it'll just hurry up and go over. That's the problem with having my lives at 11 and um, the sun being so high because I thought about putting a curtain, you know, it's something kind of filmy, kind of organza-y. We'll see. Anyway, how is everybody today? I am going to be, let's see if I can open this up a little bit here. Um... Oh, that's as far as it goes. Wow. Anyway, there's our there's our fabulous pipe box. I promise I'll post pictures of it. Because I re oops, I really there we now nope. boy, I'm messing everything up here today. There we go. Jane, off to the corner with you. I really love this project. The um the texture is really fabulous all done with just one color of Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint in ink blue it used to be called Artissimo this is ink blue this is one of my all-time favorite favorite colors and if you didn't see how I did this hey Candace good morning how are you Yay, it's Friday. <laughs> if you didn't see how I did this, you can go to Surface Anthology on YouTube. That's my YouTube channel. And um, watch the tutorial. You know, I thought about also, here's the draw. And yep, there's no knob. So they didn't, they didn't add that. But I don't think I'm going to be using it a lot. And I could just pull it from the sides. What I want to do with this is hanging on the wall it's got a hanger up here um put a jar for water and put flowers in it i think it would be really beautiful so but i got all of this beautiful color right all that with just one color so if you haven't tried milk paint yet please do it's the best so what i want to do to add though because i feel like it i don't really feel like it needs something but I'm like, let me show how I, if I want to add something, how I would do it, which I'm going to do, if any of that makes sense, right? So I went into Canva, and you can grab yourself a free Canva account, um, and it's so much fun. You guys will have a blast. And my favorite number is eight, so I decided I'll just put a number on it, right? And... And then paint it on there. And I'll show you how I transfer that. So here it is. Number eight. And I'm going to just kind of start. This is very unscientific. And there's a spam call. Oh. And I'm just kind of messing around with this right now. Finding the edge. In fact, I could take this out. And find the edges of the draw while I'm kind of centering this. And what I look at is first from here to here on this side and on that side so that they're kind of equal and, you know, and I go like this and it's like, well, how does that look? Do I like that? And I do, it's kind of going up a little bit. That means optimism, right? So I'm gonna leave it like that. Now I'm gonna cut it out. And everybody, tomorrow is the craft-a-thon. Candace, it's tomorrow. And I think, I think my segment on inlays, I think it's at 9.30, I'm not sure. But I'll send out an email, let everybody know. And um, and I know a lot of you are going to watch in the replay. So, um, you know, don't freak out if you can't make it, right? 
All right, so there's, there it is, just like that. The next, what I do, and I don't have my white Sorrel paper, but this is called Sorrel paper. It's really, really good. What page is that on? It's on my Surface Anthology page. And if you go there, or if you go to surfaceanthology.com canvas, and my last blog post, I have the link to the Facebook group. It's a free craftathon Facebook group. Get yourself in there so that you can enter. First of all, you should all be entering for all the prizes because they're really good. It's going to be a raffle. You don't need to, to buy the all access pass to get that. You don't need to buy the all access pass to um, be in the Facebook group. The all access pass is if, because um, there's a lot of presenters, um, if you want to have uh, PDFs with all the stuff that we used, have access it, access to it for over, I think for a year, that kind of thing. So, and it's it's like less than a dollar uh, uh, each tutorial. Oh, good, Candace. Yeah, definitely, Candace. Make sure it's tomorrow, so make sure you don't forget and enter the raffles. You could win. How exciting, right? So this is the Sorrel paper. And somewhere, and I think, I'm, you know, and I post a really funny meme, I have to order the white. And as soon as I order this white, I'm going to find my roll of white. But until then, I've been looking now for like a year. Oh, my computer's doing crazy stuff. But this is Sorrel paper. It's really inexpensive. You get a roll. It's so perfect for transferring designs like this. And really what I should do is, let me grab some tape, because I need to tape this down so that it doesn't go all over the place. We'll be right back. Now, if you did the milk paint, woo! Um, be careful with tape, because it will, before your milk paint is finished, it will kind of lift. If you've got a crackly finish, the tape will lift some of the paint. So just do as I do it. I'm gonna create a hinge. So I just have it just like I want it. And then make a hinge up at the top, just like that. And then I'm going to take a small piece of Sorrel paper. And some of you might ask, well, Jane, you know, we can use a stencil or a transfer, um, you know, all the different ways to get imagery on your piece. The thing about using Canva and doing this is you can make it exactly the size that you want and you need. So that's why I love Canva. That's one of the reasons I love Canva. All right, so there it is. And I'm gonna grab my pen and just hopefully this is gonna transfer so I can see it. Then all I do is go around and just outline. Now, I am not looking for a perfect, um, flawless, you know, copy. This is going to be rustic. Okay, and then over here. Same thing. And boy, my pen is really sharing with you how very textureful this milk paint finish is, which I really wanted. I'm going fast. go 
think that's it. And I can't see anything. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't see a thing. So it did not, yeah. It's not gonna work, you guys, with the Sorrel paper. So the next thing I can try, and I was kind of not wanting to do this, hey, Diana, how are you? Hey, Nadine, good morning. I'm trying to figure out how to transfer this image, you guys, onto my dark blue, ink blue um, paint. So I'm gonna try chalk on the back. And we'll see if this works. And then my last idea, if this doesn't work, is to make a mold that fits here and put the number eight in it. So that's my like last, my last hope. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Let's see if this will even work. Yeah, that works. Okay, so let me go over this again really fast. Make sure I got that. Yep. Shannon. All right, you guys, I'm going to repeat myself. Candace heard me talk about this. Tomorrow is the craft-a-thon. So if you go to surfaceanthology.com, just go to my blog post about it. And there's a link there for the Facebook page. It's free. Get into the Facebook page and then make sure that you enter. I post it on my page. I'm sure it's in the group. The raffle, because they're giving away so much good stuff. I think there's a cricket. I think there's all kinds of cool stuff. So go to um, surfaceanthology.com, just to the blog. It's my latest blog post. Get into the Facebook group. And in the Facebook group, um, the, the, uh, all of the um, presentations, all of the tutorials will be viewable for 24 hours. If you want longer, get the All Access, all access Pass. And um, you'll get a lot of PDFs and some other stuff along with that. I think it's $27. It's like a dollar for each workshop because there's that many of us, right, presenting. All right, why do I think that looks weird? Oh, well, there it is. So that worked. Now I'm going to paint it really fast. You know what, Shannon, I'm going to send that out. I think it was, um, I can't look at my phone because that's my other camera. Melanie let me know. I think it's like 930, but I'm not sure if it's Eastern or Central. I suspect it's Central. Um, and I hope she, I think she's going to send out a thing because there's, there's so many. There's like, I don't know, there's over 20 people. So it's going to be a lot of good stuff. Um. But I will. Shannon, is, I just got that notice this morning. And by the way, oh my God, look at the sun. Everybody, it, it was cloudy here. And I'm like, yay, it's cloudy. So I won't be in the sun like this so early. But um, I got braces yesterday. And I didn't realize I was laughing with the dentist. Well, I was laughing. He wasn't laughing. Because two of my three sons had braces. And... When they were telling me how to maintain these braces, they're like, you have to brush four times a day and do all this stuff. I'm, I was like, I'm like, my kids didn't brush four times a day. I don't remember that. But man, now I am. Okay, I'm going to, it's, it's, um, the name of the group is different than the, the official name of the group, Diana. So, um, go to surfaceanthology.com. Just go to blog, and I have all the links there. Anything in yellow is a link. So just click on it and get in that group. So that way, because um, I thought it was Craftathon 2023. That's not the name of the group. <laughs> 
Oh, great. Thank you, Shannon. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, that's for sure, right? Okay, let's paint this really fast. So I have some vintage linen, my fave, and some little tiny brushes. Let's get in closer so I can make myself nervous painting this. <laughs> There we go. Yes. Yeah, so every hey Sandy, good to see you. I I promise I'm gonna send out an email. If you're not on my email list, whether just go to surfaceanthology.com, something will pop up. Just fill that out. You'll be on my email list. Um, and since you know it's really scary, a lot of uh People with business pages, things weird things have been happening on Facebook, like they're losing their pages. So um, that's why it's like, get on my email list. That way, <laughs> if they they get me off of here for saying the wrong thing, I can talk to you, right? <laughs> you couldn't find it's 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 just all you have to type in is surfaceanthology.com. Up on the top, it says blog. And then it and it says Craftathon 2023, and just click on that, and it will have all that in there, um, Diana. All right, here's the here's the brush, very small, and I'm just gonna outline this, just kind of go along. And when I want to, you see what I'm doing there. When I want to make the line bigger, I just press my press my brush down and then lift it up when I want it to be thinner. I am not a calligrapher, everybody. So um, you're not gonna see that, unfortunately. I have the greatest respect for them. All right, so there's my eight, right? And yep, I write, I write naturally as a lefty from right to left, so I don't drag my my uh, hand through everything. Same thing. And when you're painting over a um, crunchy surface like this, don't get frustrated. Your lines aren't going to be perfect, but we don't want that. We want something really aged, right? Found it. Yay! The link on here took me, yes, to Chalk Mercantile. Right, that's why I say, just put in everybody, just, and I didn't do anything on Chalk, that's my shop. Um, but surfaceanthology.com, you'll um, see my latest blog post. All right, same thing, pressing down, and then I lift up to get that. Don't have coffee before you do something like this because you want really steady hands. When I used to do makeup and I would have, you know, like a bride or someone in my chair in the morning, no coffee. Cause you, oh my God, your hands will shake. Okay, and coming around. And then just, boom. So how cute is that, right? Number eight, I love that number. It's done, I'm gonna dry it. And then we're gonna finish this. Cause I wanna talk to you about options for finishing depending on the kind of milk paint finish you got. I am challenged today, what a Friday. Oh, there we go, Southern Crush Obsessed, is that it? All right, I'm going to, listen, I promise I'm going to put every single link in, um, like, in one post today on Facebook, and then um, I think I have it in the blog post, but that way you'll see it. But you got to get into that group um, so you can watch everything for free and make sure you enter the raffles. I love raffles. Oh, my goodness. They're so much fun. All right, let's try this real fast. Okay. 
Okay. Now you see how you don't you hardly use any paint for stuff like this. You love freehand writing, isn't it fun? Yay, you entered! Yay! <laughs> Good luck. I love it too. It's a lot of fun, and I'm in another group with um these old. I don't want to call them old time, but a lot of the guys are in their 70s. But they are um, sign makers. And if you think about the signs that, that you used to see or you might see now in a, in a film noir, like um, um, detective story, and you always go into the te detective's office and there's glass and there's his name, you know, written on it. And you'll see those guys, they'll put a pole and they'll kind of go like this. I'm going to group with those guys and they don't know anything about what we all do. They don't need to. Um but they can, they can write, you know, script. It's just amazing, you know? And I'm a disaster. Let me come out here now. Let's open this shot up, all right? I went to um, Catholic school when I was little, and I made the nuns insane. They didn't try to switch me, but I made them crazy. Um, but look at that. Look at how cute that is, right? Number eight. Now, there are two ways to finish this. I can't, there's th actually three ways to finish it. I could do hemp oil. I can use wax. And if I had a chippy finish that was so extreme um, that I, you know, I might really love it, but it's like I could see that it's going to continue to chip. I would use matte sealer, right? Because that's going to kind of hold it all together, glue it down, and freeze it, right? And this one is by Amy Howard. This is matte sealer. I would not use anything shiny on this. Um, I would keep it super, super matte. And because I painted something that was previously finished, it was really unpredictable, right? Remember this side? And it was just going crazy. You know, I it, nothing would stick. So then I just stuck with the um, ink blue right down onto that after I, I scuffed it a little. Look at the back. Perfect, right? Because it, had, it wasn't finished. It was just a raw piece of wood. So the milk paint just sticks like glue. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is use wax, because you guys know I love wax. Um, but I want to show you, let's see, this is pretty, oh good, the sun is hitting it. You see those chips? And you might go, oh Jane, I love this, I want it to stay just like this. Grab your matte sealer and just seal it, that's it. And you'll be very, very happy. Okay. Now, I'm using Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Wax. Um, I am, I might do a little uh, scuffing up of my number eight after I wax. You can distress before you wax, after you wax, during your waxing, right? Um, you just have to know your products, know what you're using. But I think I'm, I'm going to do it after. I'm going to hang it on the wall and see if I want to. Because there is some, there are some areas that are dropping out, which I really like. Right? It's not, it's not perfect in the, by any means. Now, are all of you still using cursive for writing? Oh. I was out, my husband and I were out with some friends, Jerry and his brother Ron. Ron is 80, which I was shocked. They were both teachers and they were just lamenting along with me that they're not teaching cursive in school anymore. And I was like, I know, I know, I know. And and they said that a lot, of, yes to cursive, right? Hey, Danielle, right, Danielle? And it's not the kids' fault. Don't blame the kids, I'll tell you. I have such issues. I have such issues with what's going on. I think, I think they're teaching to a test. And I think art, music, 
sports, all that stuff, all the good stuff in life is getting cut, right? And cursive, you're a cursive lover, Diana, right? It, and you won prizes, see? Absolutely. Not me. I was, I used to make Sister Mary Ida really upset because I would, I would, my, because I'm a lefty, it was going the wrong direction. Of course, I was always covered in ink. Yeah, it really, right, Diana, Danielle? It bothers me so much. My sons went to, re, uh, you know, really good schools um, out in California, in Marin. They went to Redwood High School. It's like none of those kids can write in cursive. They could barely print. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, I'm, and I, you know, if you watch young people, like, do their signature, right? It's, it's They have such a hard time with it. Right, and they don't care about the arts anymore. Well, you know me, Danielle. I went on a rant about the Statue of David. I almost had a nervous breakdown. I'm still, I can't even think about it. Um, the arts, right. And, and I think of cursive writing as an art. Right, Diana? Right, Danielle? Right, you guys? Yeah, and Nadine, too. It's going to be our secret code, right? Oh, my God. That's Nadine. That's funny. Oh, my God. I love that. Cursive will be a secret code for older folks. <laughs> it's true. But then, the, yeah, these kids will not be able to um, read all those old documents, right? All that stuff. And um, so my, I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been trying to teach my grandson, Mateo. I'm not trying. I'm teaching him. We just write it, write his name. We write, you know, anything. He loves to do it. If you don't torture kids, you know, by giving, making them miserable with homework and stuff, <laughs> they love to do it. And like, he's like, oh, this is neat, Gigi. And he knows how all the letters and stuff. But yeah, it's a, it will be a foreign language. Danielle, it's so true. Oh, no, it's Diana, that's hilarious. My grandson thought it was an another language. <laughs> It is so true. So I say I'm all for bringing, slowing everything down, bringing back cursive, art, music. I couldn't sing or anything, but I loved going to music class with Mrs. Gufst, Gufst, son. We had a large Swedish population where I grew up, and I had a hell of a time with the names. But I loved, I loved watching everybody sing. It was great. Anyway, getting back to waxing. So you see me using a natural bristle brush, and I always use, this is um, the Amy Howard at Home chip brushes. You could use a regular chip brush, um, which I don't have in front of me, but they're much more narrow. This is really great for these little projects. Uh, so I just do that, emulsify in my wax, and then I just brush on the wax. And the other thing um, is reading. I, I think they need to let kids just read. Stop asking them every paragraph to analyze it. And just let them read. Reading, right? Such an escape. It was so wonderful. Still is. I have, I have at least 20 books on my nightstand. I'm really bad. There you go. Yep, Nadine, I was in Catholic school. Penmanship every day. Remember those, those pages we got? that had like the top line, the bottom line, and then that middle line was dotted. Yeah, every single day. And I looked forward to it as long as Sister Mary Ida wasn't walking by my desk. Oh, so fun. All right, and I'm just brushing this on and you'll see your paint get darker, that's okay. It's gonna lighten up a little bit as it dries, but the wax really brings out um, just the colors, the depth, everything. It's, it's the best. I love waxing. So let me show you what's happening, right? So there I am waxing. You see the shine of that wax? This wax, you don't need to, um, you know, wipe it off. You just brush it on and let it dry. That's it. Oh my God, yeah, it was a challenge. Dan Danielle saying it was a challenge to get those loops just right. Oh, 
I never got the loops right, I'll tell you. I have the funniest story. I don't know if I've ever told it, but, um, and you know, I used to torture the nuns and Father Sullivan because I was always challenging them about limbo and all this stuff or, you know, I was just always like, well, why is it like that, right? Well, one day we got to make puppets, hand puppets, you know, with socks and yarn and all this good sequins. And I was the leader of my little group. And this was like in third grade. And we were supposed to pick something out of the Bible and tell the story. You know, I don't know. All I wanted to do was make these puppets. So we all had these super glamorous puppets. They were all blonde. And, and we had to go up and say our little story and we made it up and and sister mary ida asked us all to go sit down <laughs> i was like i laugh about that i was so mortified but i also couldn't understand why she just didn't love our beautiful puppets <laughs> oh my god isn't it beautiful nadine i know the wax is the best oh there you go oh thank you danielle right it's a tobacco pipe box and thank you Danielle it's you know I find these and I find them so often that I think back when they had wood class right wood shop the kids would make you know you got to pick a project and um and you and I think some kids would make a pipe box and you would have put your pipes in here and this is obviously made for those really long pipes and then you would put the tobacco down in the draw right so I love these <laughs> Diana saying I love making hand puppets from socks yeah so many childhood memories right the best the best absolutely so um yeah that that was me oh I just loved those you know those times in school it was the best all right, now I am going to wax the inside. And I think when you've got something like this, even though you might say to yourself, well, I'm not going to be, you know, putting anything in there. I don't really need to protect it. Even more than protecting it, the wax changes the look of the paint. So you want it all to be consistent. And if you really wanted to go crazy, um, you could do the ins. I mean, I could have, you know, layered this with different colors, but you can use your darker waxes on the inside to add a little bit more dimension and also make it look more worn, right? Oh, Diana, so your mom had a box like this for an iron. How cool is that? That would be really neat. Um, I love it. So, you know, anyway, getting back to cursive. Yeah, I don't know what we could do about this situation, you guys. You know, I mean, my son's teachers were probably sick of hearing me. Oh, no, here comes that woman who's kind of, she wants to know why her kids aren't writing in cursive. Um, but, yeah, I just think it's sad. Oh. And there's something so nice about having your own little notebook, right? I think it's why we love journals. You have your own little, you know, remember those notebooks that had the, um, that modeled kind of black and white cover? God, what are those called? I know Diane's, I mean, D Danielle's going to know. Diana will probably know too. Um, but it was something, there was something so nice to open up your notebook and look at all your cursive writing and, you know, whatever. It was great. All right. Did I do, I don't think I did this side. So you see how well that paint is sticking. <clears throat> I am not super concerned about this and it's starting to dry. You see those lighter spots, right? Um, I'm not really concerned that it's all going to chip off anymore like it did when I was painting it. Um, but if this were something that was going to be used, I would have a very, very different approach to it especially the sides if this were a dresser this would be fine for the draw fronts the sides the top would be different because tops you know we put stuff on take it off all the time 
and it would start to really rub against that, um, you know, any little raised chips. So I end up making the tops very, very smooth. And when you look at authentic antique painted pieces, that's exactly how they look because everything was worn off. Wow. So do you all have spring fever? Is everybody getting like super jazzed? Because it's here. We have daffodils blooming everything. The trick to waxing, which I didn't really do so well here because I'm yip yapping, is to put on a very even veil of wax. Because we want it to get into everything and um, really protect that that finish that you've created. All right. That's it. It's done. Now, if you wanted, if again, it's going to be used um, and you want to create an even stronger finish, you can put on a couple of more lay up, a couple more coats of wax for sure. Crocuses are up and daffodils are coming and Daniela's in um, Pennsylvania, right? Which is colder. I think we're, we're in Connecticut along, you know, the coastline. So it stays a little bit warmer. Okay, Danielle's got a couple of questions. Hey, and of course there's a delay. Can you believe next weekend is Easter? <gasps> I'm like, I'm like, ugh. Do you? I do. And I know, I, you know, I was going to say what I do and how to keep my um, brushes clean. And then I just forgot about it while, while I was yip yapping about um, my puppet show or something. I do. I, wa I wash these with scrubby soap. I always wash everything with scrubby soap. Um, and I really, really do. It's down there on my sink. It's at my slop sink, my kitchen sink. And I take the scrubby soap, really hot water, back and forth, and I really, um, you know, kind of mush it around with my fingers, and they come out great. This one was just washed. It's still wet. I did that this morning. Yeah. Now, um, how long for the wax to cure? It depends on where you are, the weather, is it humid? how, you know, what type of wax it is. But I say, like for my dining room table, before I really felt comfortable, it was it was a, a about six weeks, I remember, because I put on multiple layers of wax. So um, some waxes can take a year to cure, absolutely. And all curing is, is drying, right? And that's why that wax gets super, super hard. Poly cures also, right? You ever notice when you put down a, a, a clear top coat, you can, you just know when it's soft. It's like your fingernails, when you go to get your fingernails done. And even though they let you go out and you, your nails feel dry, you know the next day they're much harder. You won't get any dents or anything. And Danielle's saying, I don't always wash my clear wax brushes. Just if I see if they picked up any residual paint color. Yep. I'll leave. I have those big, you know, those those big round uh, wax brushes. And those I'll leave for six months. I'll have one that I just write clear on it. And I'll leave it for just six months. And then I'll wash them. Absolutely. Hey, Sandy. I actually, Sandy says, I actually had a teacher tell me to punish my son for writing cursive in second grade. Oh, I insisted that he be put in another teacher's class and the school allowed it. Yeah. I know it's 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 crazy. And I think Sandy, I think I think teachers are under a lot of pressure now. We're losing teachers, right? Things are getting wacky, crazy. I don't and I don't think they're paid enough to put up, right, with with uh, all of us. God, when I was a kid, I just asked a lot of questions. Um 
Yeah, that's, I think they're, they don't want, the scores in the classroom are tied to like the real estate values in the town. So I think that, that there's a lot of, you know, fear there with the teachers. Hey, Sonia. I do like this and have a perfect spot for it. However, we have a family mandate that we finish major de-junking before bringing anything else into our abode. Yes, 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 yes. I have to tell you, Sonia, I just, if we're locals, I have a spot down in um, Deep River, Connecticut, and, and um, I just had a bookcase. Well, I finally tortured them. I brought it, you know, out my inner child and I was like, can you let me have a bigger space? Can't you? So I finally have a bigger space. And, and a lot of the stuff that I do for demos and stuff, I'm going to bring down there. I'm going to be able to add hopefully the rest of my iron orchid line. I've already got my entire DIY paint line down there. So I'm excited and that's going to help me de-junk. But yes, that's a really good philosophy, Sonia. When you bring something in, something else has to go out. One of my friends said, we bring one thing in, two things have to go out. So yeah, for sure. I hear you. Um, but I love, I'm addicted to these. I'm going to turn it to an angle here. I love these boxes. Any kind of box I adore. And look at this. As I'm talking, it's drying. Right? So you're not going to lose all those beautiful um, tones in the wood in, in the um, ink blue it will all come out so don't get scared you know when you put the wax on and go oh my god it's all gone it's there and like I said I don't have my sanding block I'm gonna see how it looks if this looks too bright I'm just gonna take a sanding block very very lightly you know scuff it a little bit but I think it'll be fine but again, I'm going to throw in like a, a, a ball jar in here, put some water in, and I could put flowers in it and put it on the wall. Sonia says, I've done too many years of bringing and thinking I can store it. Yeah. And the, and the thing, Sonia, too, is when you store it, it just stays stored. You don't use it, right? It's just in storage. And, and that's frustrating also it's like I go down into our basement and I'm like oh, I forgot I got this I forgot I had this it's just yeah I hear ya all right everybody that is the end of our adorable little pipe box our pipe tobacco box when I put it up on the wall and get some daffodils in it I'll post some pictures Nadine's asking will I buff all right so I could if I want to give this a sheen, um, let me see if anything feels dry here. I could absolutely buff it. Let me grab, I don't have my buffing brush. I could use this. I could absolutely buff it if I want to shine, right? And there it goes. It's so easy to bring up a shine. I don't necessarily want it to be, but you can. Look at that shine, right? And I have to tell you, I love this wax. This wax dried while we were, you know, while we were all chatting here, and um, it's beautiful, and, and it's dry, you hear that? You know, it's not sticky, it's dry, it's not coming off on my hands. It's beautiful. Um, and my last tip is if you're going, and I again, my dining room table is waxed. And how I did it is I would do this to the top of the table, obviously on a smooth surface. I would wax it at the end of the day. Next day, I get up, buff it, put on another thin coat of wax, wait 24 hours, and do that again. Another thin coat and buff. When you buff, you are creating a really uh, durable um, kind of surface. So it does help that way. Diana's saying, oh, thank you, Sandy. Um, but, but here's the difference, right? There's the shine. Can you guys see that shine, right? 
and there's the mat. And I, if you, if you find that you buffed it too much, all you have to do is grab some steel wool and rough it up a little bit, very fine steel wool. Diana's saying, sounds like my workshop. I forgot what's out there since I don't go there during the winter unless I buy something and take it there. Yeah, your workshop, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, that's amazing how dry it fasts, right? I mean, how fast it dries. How long does it take for curing? Again, it could be, you know, a month. I mean, this wax, this is a really beautiful wax, and I'm not just saying that because wax is like more important to me than my paint even. I love uh, the DIY wax is absolutely gorgeous. This is the Miss Mustard Seed Wax and it's really, really beautiful. It's a really beautiful wax and um, yeah, it doesn't, there's no stickiness. It's like silk, it's beautiful. You see the shine, right uh, Danielle? Yep. But curing again, if I were to do three coats of this and this was on my dining room table, yeah, month and a half, two months, some waxes, um, there are other brands, different types of wax, they could take up to a year to cure. And um, I also do very, very thin coats. Very, very thin. I don't want to blob it on, you know? And I always use a brush. I don't use a cloth. The reason being, I feel like when you use a cloth to wax, your wax is going in the cloth and not on the piece. And you know, I feel like I'm wasting my money and it's ending up here and not where I want it to go. And lastly about this, if you look at museum pieces, antique pieces, painted pieces, you'll see parts of, the, of it are shiny, parts of it are really matte, right? The more I touch this draw, the more I touch it, I'm buffing it with my fingers, right? So that would be very, that would begin to develop a sheen and parts of it, you know, the wax might wear off the paint and it will be matte. So um, for those people, there are people who really are into um, recreating, you know, flawless antique finishes. Like they, they want to fool museum people, right? They, they want them to think it's a really, you know, 500 year old painted finish. That's what they would start doing. That parts of it are going to be shiny. Parts of it are going to be matte. It's very cool. All right, you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off now, but I'm going to put everywhere I could think of um, all the links really clearly. The Facebook group for the Craftathon, the raffle link for the Craftathon, and anything else I think, you know, I think that's really the two most important things. I'll also put the access pass if you're interested in that. And then you get a longer time, like a year, to watch all the videos and keep going back and watching them. Um, links to all the products, that kind of thing. But the Facebook group is free. Watching everything for 24 hours is 100% free. And it's 100% free to enter the raffle. Right, Shannon? Enter that raffle. Um, and I know I mentioned that I'm going to do a raffle, but I'm going to wait until the craft-a-thon is over, and then I'm going to be doing a raffle. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Shannon, you have an awesome weekend, too. Everybody, have an awesome weekend. Any questions, just let me know in the comments, and I'll go back and look. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it. I, I love it. I, I think it's really cute, and uh, I can't wait to get some flowers in it. All right, everybody, take care. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow for Christmas.